Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Eat The Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you the ERC777 standard, which is an improved version of ERC20. So there are three main differences with ERC20. The first one is the delegated transfer system. So for ERC20, the way it works is you can allow third party addresses to transfer your tokens, but up to a certain amount. In the case of ERC777, we have a similar system. So in this case, third party addresses are called operator, but they are not limited by a specified amount of tokens that they can transfer. So if you allow an operator to transfer tokens on your behalf, this operator can transfer all your tokens. There is no limit. The second difference is the two hooks that are called when you transfer tokens. The most important one is the receive hook. It allows to call a function in recipient smart contract or addresses. So in other words, these addresses can react to incoming token transfer. So this is similar to what we had with ERC-223 and it allowed to do delegated transfer just with one transaction instead of the two transactions of ERC-20 when you first have to approve and then call transfer from. The difference with ERC-223 is that with ERC-777, not only smart contract can react to incoming token transfer, but also regular addresses. And this is possible thanks to ERC-1820. So I'm going to explain just after height work. And there is also another hook for the sender of the token. So this is useful in case of a delegated transfer. So a token owner can decide to cancel a transfer of an operator by reverting in the send hook. So here you have a full smart contract. So first you have the sender, so that's the current owner of a token. And this address want to send his token to another Ethereum address, which is the recipient. So it's going to call the send function of the ERC-777 token. Then the token is not going to do the transfer directly, but first it's going to call the registry contract. So that's the ERC-1820 that I talked about in the previous video. So if you don't know what is ERC-1820, make sure to check out this video. So it's going to ask the ERC-1820 registry if the recipient address has registered the token receive interface. So token received is the function that's going to be called. So it doesn't mean that the recipient address has to implement this function itself. It can delegate it to another smart contract, but it has to register it to this ERC-1820 registry first. So the ERC-1820 is going to answer to the ERC-777 token and give the address that implements token received. For our example, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to assume that the implementer of this token received function is the same address as the recipient. But it doesn't have to be. For example, if the recipient is a regular address, then it's impossible for a regular address to implement any function. So in this case, token received will be implemented by another address. All right, let's continue our explanation of the transfer process. And next, the token is going to call the token received function on the recipient smart contract. And if there is no error in this function, the transaction is going to be completed. So in this example, I show you how the receive hook work, but we also have the send hook. And this will be triggered in the case of a delegated transfer when an operator transfer a token on behalf of another address. So in this case, the send hook is called first and the receive hook is called second. And for the send hook, you also have this interaction between the token and the ERC-1820 registry. All right, so now let's see some code. So this is the Solidity interface of ERC-777. So there are a couple of functions that are similar with ERC-20, like name, symbol, token supply. Granularity in ERC-20 is called decimals. Then you have a couple of functions to manage the operators. So you can authorize an operator, you can revoke it. Then for transferring tokens, so in ERC-20, this is transfer, but for ERC-777, this is send. Then when an operator wants to send a token, then it's going to call this function operator send. And by the way, you can attach some metadata for each transaction. So here you can attach data and for a delegated transfer, then data here is for, from the sender of the transaction and operator data is from the operator. 
and this metadata is going to be forwarded to the send and receive hook functions. Then a couple of functions to burn token. And then you have a couple of events that are emitted during transfer or when a token is minted or burned. By the way, the standard does not define any function to mint token because this is very custom to each implementation. All right, so let's scroll down. So then we have the send and receive hook. So these are not inside the token contract, but they are implemented by sender and recipients. So this tokens to send function is the send hook that is called in the case of a delegated transfer. So if you want to prevent an operator from sending a token, you have to revert in this function. So this has to be implemented by the sender or a smart contract that implement this function on behalf of the sender. That means that first you need to register this interface in the ERC1820 registry. And second, we also have an other function for the recipient of token. So that's the token received function. So again, if a recipient wants to refuse an incoming transfer, then it has to revert inside this function. And you also have to first register this interface in the ERC1820 registry. So if you want to have even more information about ERC777, then you can check the official standard at this address. So there is really a lot of information about Ethereum token and I've prepared a short cheat sheet with all the most important information and you can get it for free by following the link in the description. All right, so that's it for this explanation of what is the ERC-777 token standard. I hope that now you understand the benefit over ERC-20 and ERC-223, and especially the send and the receive hooks are really, really powerful. And a really simplified delegated transfer, which will come quite handy for decentralized exchanges. In the next video, I'll introduce you the ERC-721 token standard for non-fungible assets. So these together with ERC-20 are the two pillars of Ethereum tokens. So make sure to watch this video as well. Thanks for watching and see you for the next video.